How y'all doing today? Welcome back to the Caffeinated Traders Lounge. Today we're going to look at trend lines. So trend lines do have a pretty bad rap in the trading industry. Uh, many people say they don't work and they're a useless tool. They're too subjective, this and that. There's a million, million different reasons why people say they don't work. However, we are going to look at how we can actually use them. And to start, I will agree that they don't actually work by themselves. All right. You can't just throw up a trend line, take a long just because it hit that line and expect to be right all the time. All right. You do have to look at other factors in the market. And this is with any tool you look at. You can't just trade one tool and expect to pull profits consistently out of the market. All right. You need to understand the structure, understand, understand what's happening with price, price action and use everything together to form your bias or to form a signal or confirmation on why you want to enter into a position. All right. So with that said, let's take a look at what trend lines even are. Um, I'm sure you probably already know basically all it is is a line up and a line down where price continuously bounced off that. So basically in an uptrend, you're going to have price above the trend line bouncing like this. All right. And then eventually price will break that trend line and that trend line will be no longer valid. It played its part, bounced one, two, three times until finally that trend ended. All right. So in a downtrend price, we're going to be looking at a trend line above price. So basically price moved down like this, came up, moved down again, hit the trend line, bounced lower, came up. And then finally we broke that trend. All right. So a lot of people do use trend lines, both at the bottom and at the top. And I'm going to show you why that's not necessarily very important, or you should even really pay attention to. Let's say we draw one right here. All right. Now here and here, it may have worked. All right. Well, this first one, we wouldn't have known that it was going to bounce off that, but right here, let's say someone wanted to take a short here. However, all right, let's just throw this up just to make it more visual. Let's say, you know, they wanted to take a counter trend trade. Remember we are currently uptrending, right? We are in an uptrend. So let's say someone wanted to take a counter trend trade right there. But then price decided it wanted to break right through it. We are in an uptrend. Remember that this could easily, easily just break right through that zone. You took your short position and got stopped out of that. So the only ones we want to be looking at are long positions off the bottom of the trend line. All right. So in an uptrend, only look for long positions in a downtrend, only look for short positions. All right. We don't want to be trading these short moves. Sometimes they don't even go up, right? Sometimes they just go sideways and then you're left wondering what happened when price drops off again. All right. You didn't catch any pips off of it and you get stopped out. All right. So don't try to catch counter trend trades, follow the trend down, wait for it to retrace into that. Then look for setups to take short positions. All right. So that's your basics about trend lines. Um, then once the trend does break, you could 
start looking for long positions, right? Once that breaks, you could buy on the break. That is a low probability setup, but you can do it. The more, um, the better trade would be to look for a retrace and then catch the move up. All right. Right. Wait for the break of that trend line. Draw your Fibonacci on there. Catch the trade right there on between your 50% 618 and then ride that up to wherever you think the market may climb to. All right. But until this trend line breaks, we are not looking for long positions. All right. Just know that. All right, so let's jump into the charts and see if we can find something on here that's uh, worthwhile using for trend lines. All right, so we pull up to the charts here. We got 2 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's the London session open. Currently, uh, we are in daylight savings time, so it's 2 a.m. Um, and then we do see that we have this high here that we just took out those highs. So this is telling us price may want to continue higher. We are in an uptrend already. We have from these lows here to this high there, right here, we hit our 50%, right? And price is starting to move back up, all right? So now we clearly have some strength going forward and we broke those highs now. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to transfer it over to these highs, get rid of my Fibonacci there, make the chart a lot clearer. All right. Now, One thing I do want to note is that anytime we have a line on a chart, whether it's a support line or a diagonal trend line, they are always going to be zones. All right. We never just use a single trend line. They're always going to be zones that we want to pay attention to. All right. So we got in this high. Price doesn't necessarily need to come all the way back down to this, but if it comes within the zone, it's going to be an area that we want to pay attention to. All right. So now as price comes down, if it does, we're going to look for somewhere we can enter. So one thing I would do personally is throw out my Fibonacci right here. And as you can see, this zone we drew is right within the 50% and the 382. All right. So let's continue this down a little bit. Now, I'm going to throw up a trend line right here. I'm going to take this high, the close here, the high there, the close here, or, well, sorry, the open of this one, whatever. Either way, we do have a slight trend down. Now we hit our 382. Don't want to enter yet. Okay. We hit our highs here. Boom. So now this is a time where you can use a trend line above price in a small counter trend trade, right? But we don't want to take this counter trend trade. We want to use it for a confirmation of a long position. All right. So now we're going to enter there. Let's set it just below our 618 with a 6% or a 6 pip stop loss. Let's go for a 3 to 1. All right. 
right? So we broke this trend here. We came in, tested these highs off this strong move into our 382 and 50%. All right. We could now take our trend and use that in there somewhere. Remember, these are zones. Doesn't need to be perfect. All right. As long as it's within that, we're all good. Okay. So now let's see how price plays out. Okay. Perfect. So now what we could do now that, well, what have we moved up from our entry point? We're now up 10 pips. So we're over halfway through it. We can now move stops to break even riskless trade and see what price does from here. And price starts consolidating. Okay. So now we have a period of consolidation right here, right? We could start looking to maybe close this position, right? What did we have originally? We had a six pip stop loss. So we could have closed this one at nine pips, right? We could have canceled that trade as it started consolidating here with a one to uh, 1.5 to one uh, risk to reward, right? We could have closed that or as we moved our stop loss up, would have been a riskless trade and kept it to see how it played out or took partial profits off it. You know, all these things you, you got to figure out for yourself what you're actually going to do and how you're going to manage the trade as it plays out, right? But for the sake of this video, we're just going to leave it, move our stop loss up. And um, yeah, let's see how this plays out. We're going to pull this trend line up further. See if we don't get another bounce off of it. All right. Okay. So that manipulated these highs here. So now because of this long wick, a lot of people may think that we're actually going short, but we know we had a strong move here, bounced off these highs and our previous highs, right? So we know that price likely has, it has a higher probability of actually continuing higher. And we're still above our trend line. We're not looking for shorts just yet. All right. But I can guarantee you there are people off that wick are trying to go short, trying to front run that position, trying to get in with the best entry possible before it even broke the trend. All right. So what do we got here? We got it bouncing off our trend line, but we are consolidating. So personally, I wouldn't take it just off that. If it actually bounces off this trend line and breaks the highs there, now we got a signal to go long. So you could enter into another long position right there. Let's use another six pip stop loss just below these lows. Let's target another three to one. All right. And see what happens. All right. Beautiful. First position. That one hit our take profit. And let's see. What happens here? Okay, so it's slightly consolidating here. So again, we're past half of our take profit, so we can move stops to break even. And 
There we go. So we just hit our take profit. So within an hour and a half, we just banked 36 pips. 18 here, 18 here. And we only risked 12 to make 36. All right. So now let's keep playing this through and see how this works out. Let's move our trend line up further. Let's see if it gives us another bounce off of it. Okay, so we could have actually got more profit here. So that's another thing you got to watch. If uh, in your strategy you want to take partials at your original take profit level and then let the rest ride, you can do that. That's up to you, but that's based on your strategy. Um, don't take that as I'm telling you to do that. But if you backtest it and it works better for you, by all means, use it. All right, so we are looking like we may get another bounce here. And yeah, we are getting another bounce here. So we could take another long position here. However, I don't know personally if I would because we've already from our London session open moved 50 pips. All right, that's another huge factor that you need to consider when trading the markets. How is everything playing out? Don't just use one tool. Yes, it's bouncing off of it, but we're already up 50 pips just in the London session alone. All right, the Euro on a daily ATR average to range has roughly 70 pips. So if it's moved 50 pips, in what's this three hours do you really believe that it's actually going to move up higher than this the likelihood is probably not all right so take everything into consideration when using any tool all right so let's see what happens and there you go so it did break our trend line slightly and there you go. So now we could potentially look for shorts here. We could. But good thing we didn't. A lot of the time off a trend line break, you want to actually look for a retest off of it to confirm that it didn't just do what it just did. All right. So once it breaks through, wait for price to actually confirm that it wants to stay below that trend line. All right, so let's just back this up. And now we are starting to consolidate. We didn't quite make a new high, All right? We got these lows here. So it looks like, like I said, we're up 50 pips already. So now we may be starting to distribute price here to get in for short positions. All right. We just had a nice little up move there through these highs, trying to get more buyers into this market. All right. So now let's take a trend line from here and let's grab this one. All right. So now let's get rid of this. Get rid of this trend, Ooh. this trend line here. 
All right, that's no longer valid. We are currently distributing price, consolidating at the top of an up move. We now have a new trend that's forming here. So because we're starting to consolidate and we had our strong trend up already, we don't want to be taking longs off this trend line. This is the one we're going to look for a break of it. All right. So price is moving around nicely here. And we just had a break of structure slightly, but like I said, wait for price to actually give you um, confirmation that it wants to stay below the trend line. So it's possible that isn't where we want our trend line. So let's put it right here into this move. So we had strong buying pressure here. All right. They invalidated it by spiking it through it. So now we'll move our trend line over to that low. Those highs still holding very nicely. Remember they are a zone that we want to pay attention to. All right. It's not a specific price point. As you can see, price does go around through it, plays in it, right? So now we got another small bounce here. Yeah, see, came up through those highs, but still stayed around that zone. All right. Okay. So now we had a strong move down. We still have our trend here. Let me draw it as a zone just so you can see it better. How price does respect it within a zone context. All right. There, now we got a strong move down. These highs broke those highs, right? Now we broke all these lows here, okay? So now we want to look for a possible retest to enter into this market, okay? Okay, I'm going to throw up our Fibonacci here and beautiful. We hit that trend line dead on within our 382 50%. So let's take a short position if it gives us there. Okay, gave us one bearish candle after that. Let's go with a, a three pip stop. Why is that black? Okay, let's go with a 15. Go with, whoa, sorry, five pip stop. Three to one, five pip stop above our six one eight. Target 50, 15 pips for a three to one. Okay. Now, as you can see, we have another strong volume candle. That's another confirmation. We have a small body, but large volume. Okay. That's volume spread analysis. That's another topic that you can discover on your own. I'll make a video for it at one point. Uh, but until then, just know that. Small candles, high volume, do mean something in this market. Okay, sorry about that, my camera just died. Uh, let me fix this up here. Um, so, basically, like I said, volume is an important factor. A lot of people don't even use it in Forex. Um, 
but it will have an impact on price and you can see a small body candle with high volume shows us that sellers are actually absorbing all those buy orders all right so there's someone here that's not letting price go higher right and that that's a little deeper topic topic but yeah anyway let's see how this plays out and does price get to our 15 pip target? Wow. Okay, we just, just made it there. We literally just hit our target. All right, so now let's take our trend line here, right? So we want to start watching this trend line now. Okay, so price isn't really respecting it yet and definitely not respecting it at all. All right, so we bounced off of it one time, but that's all we got out of this one. All right, we were able to catch one move off this trend line and that was really it because we didn't really know that this was a trend yet. However, it still is useful to us because we do know that now we broke this trend and we may potentially move higher. All right. So we could start looking for long positions if we get a signal to do so. Okay. So let's take our Fibonacci again at those lows with those highs and Okay, so we kind of rejected at our 618. So we could, we bounced off our trend line as well. So we could actually look for a long position right here. Right, let's go right off of our 618. Let's target around these highs here. Mm, let's be a little conservative. Let's just go 10 pips. All right, let's be conservative with it. We know we did break, right? We had a strong move up. We had our period of consolidation. Now we broke down. So we don't really want to be looking for a huge move off this, all right? Like I said, you have to take price action as a whole and create a story for it and see what price is more likely to do based on what has happened recent all right so because we did move up today buyers are strong yes we slowly started to move down however this this move up here we may not get a very strong move off of it but let's um let's go to a um Two and a half. Two and a half uh, reward to one risk. Right? And it did come back slightly into our uh, negative territory here, but then started bouncing up. Okay, it didn't quite reach our take profit on that. That's okay. We could have as price was moving and got to the middle of our take profit, move our stop loss to break even. Here, could look for another entry. Let's say you didn't get that first one off that, right? Could be looking for another entry right here off our 618 again. We have a trend line moving up, but so we didn't really get a move off of our trend line here, but we do know the trend is up. So we could have taken it here. We have these highs, right? 
618, target again. Now let's go nine pips off this one with a small three pip stop loss. Okay, so now both those positions just hit take profit. Okay, let this play out a bit. And that's really all we're getting off that trend line. Okay, so mostly just this first move here. That second one, it was subjective. Um, yes, you could have got it, but many people may have not been able to actually get it if you're waiting for that bounce off the trend line, right? You move off here. You could have potentially got this one if you were paying attention to it. You had run up here, clipped our trend, clipped our 618, could have taken another long here. We took out these highs, but we would have targeted those highs wouldn't have been trying to go any more than that. So let's go maybe two and a half pip stop off that. Nah, let's go three. Just below the trend here. And we would have caught that as well. All right. So basically that's the use of a trend line, right? You only want to be looking for it let me clean this up a little bit. All right. You only want to be looking to use a trend line when it helps with other confirmations. All right. So basically, as price broke this zone here, right? It broke these highs right there first and then broke strongly through it again retraced back into it we used this trend line the break of that to confirm a move higher all right we had straw move up consolidated created a flag pattern if you want to call it that broke higher and we were able to catch that move consolidated here with our trend up we were able to catch the bounce off here and the break of this consolidation area with another long position. All right. Now here we saw price was trending this way, broke through it strongly, right? Because we moved up that 50 pips, we didn't want to be taking no more long positions, right? This is our distribution phase right here. We moved up into that. We were able to catch a move off the bottom of this trend line as a retest. And then this move here, we broke through it. We had one, two bounces. On our third, we broke through it and we were able to catch the move up off of our trend line back into our consolidation area, all right? So let's throw this up here. We had our bottom of our distribution range and the top of our distribution range. All right, so we were able to catch a couple moves up into that zone for a few extra pips. But like I said, we didn't want to continue this higher for today as we already moved quite a bit, right? So let's play this through. And for anybody wondering, this was actually Friday's move. Um, what was Friday the, what, the 19th of February, 2021. So this is exactly what happened last Friday. All right. So like I said, 
Um, you didn't want to look for a strong move up because we did have the run up distribution phase. We came down. Actually, this would have been a nice trade using, well, not necessarily, but it would have been a decent trade looking for another move into that, right? And then you could have caught the break of this trend here, right? Could have caught another move down here if you're watching this trend line break. So basically trend lines do work. And that is the point I'm trying to make here. They do work, but you can't just use them by themselves. If I were to get rid of everything else on this chart and literally just use a trend line, I could throw them up anywhere and it would make absolutely no sense. Like I would have one here, have one here, have one here. Like they are very subjective, but you have to use them in, in context with the whole price action of what is happening. All right. You can't just throw them up and expect them to bounce off them every single time. It's not going to happen. You have to understand what price is actually doing and then use that as an extra tool to confirm what you think price is going to do. All right. So if you do need better ex explanation of this, leave me a comment below. I will reply to it as soon as possible. Um, if you have any questions, uh, concerns about what we talked about today, leave me a comment and I will get back to you on that. If you like the video, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And uh, hope this video does help you use trend lines better in your trading and help you catch a few extra pips that you may not have been able to get before. All right. So hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.